All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to church on this very cold December day. And welcome to you who are online and watching us in your nice, snuggly homes. Um, we have, do we have anyone new with us here today? Make sure you take the registration at the end of the pews and sign it in as, as it goes along and then pass it back. And this is the time to fill out your prayer cards, either with joys or concerns, and you can, we'll collect them during the offering. I know we have some announcements. Um, Lyle would like everyone to know that after fellowship today, we need to move all the tables and chairs out of fellowship because the floor is getting redone and all washed up and shined up. So we need everyone's help to move the furniture. Um, Sally, I saw your sign-up sheet downstairs for the Clinton Family Services, and you can sign up. It has a nice long list of all kinds of things you can buy for the mom and the family, um, including things like uh, cleaning supplies and gift cards and shoes, and there's all kinds of things on that list. Make sure you sign up so we can support um, this family so they have just as happy a holiday as we do. And on Christmas Day during the service, I need some people to help me with readers, to help with the lessons and carols. So if you're willing to help me on Christmas Day, let me know during fellowship time. And speaking of Christmas Day, remember that you're challenged to wear your Christmas pajamas to church on Sunday, on Christmas Day. Bob's got his all set and he's ready to go. Lisa, do you have an announcement? All the children with Mrs. Sutherland. The children present the church pageant next Sunday. Next Sunday during the service. It um, was fun this morning as a retired elementary school teacher to be able to help Lisa out. All these kids on a Sunday morning so happy to see each other, and they actually did rehearse. They did a great job. Um, any other announcements? Right here. Bob? I don't know how many uh, of you know this, but uh, Carolyn Bunley was selected as Vice Principal of the Year in the state of Connecticut. Oh. <laughs> yep, that's my baby. <laughs> Anyone else? How about birthdays and anniversaries? Jeff? Oh, your mom. Char Jack and Charlie. Your, but they, your parents had an anniversary. Um, yeah, Carl? Your seventh great grandchild. Don't play with it, please. Jean? Wow. You're great, great. Jeez. Deb? Oh. Sharon? Wow, that's a lot to celebrate. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, time to sing happy birthday. Okay, come on, down with Daddy. Daddy is going. Happy birthday. We're going to hold on passing of the peace until a little bit later this morning. Take this moment to focus your hearts and minds. Every angel seems to use do not be afraid as their opening line, but perhaps no one needed to hear it more 
than Joseph. What was happening to him was the stuff that ruins lives. As a man in that time, he had all the rights to abandon Mary and preserve his dignity when he learned about her pregnancy. The stakes were high, but the angel's message of encouragement was to see a difficult circumstance, not with dread, but with joy. Amen. Good job. loving God, blessed Jesus, guiding spirit. A light within us, your flame of joy this day. Grant us openness to hear your message. Grant us courage to be your messengers in the world, creating more joy in the midst of fear. And with the angel's messenger above us, among us, and with us, we sing.
Now, if you could take a moment, we do it by waving, but if you would greet each other and pass the joy together, and to those online, it's the joy of Christ, because each time you connect with one another, your joy grows. Today's reading is from Isaiah, chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and shouting. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The majesty of Camel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong and do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be opened. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. Water, for water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp and the grass shall become reeds and rushes. May the Lord bless this reading.
And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. I invite the children to come forward, and as they bring their gifts for heifer, let us sing, Surely the Presence of the Lord. was definitely an angel. Good morning, children of God. It's great to see everybody on this uh, Advent. We're all, hold on, and then I'll let you help me. We're more than halfway through, because look, how many candles do we have? Three. We are, and this Sunday, we are celebrating Almost. We're almost to Christmas. Yeah. So we had, first Sunday was the Sunday of hope. Then last week we had peace. And today we are having joy. Joy. In a minute. Yep. And so we know that the angels came and they shared joy. And there's a lot of things that bring me joy. Yeah, we're going to sing Joy to the World later. Thank you. Can you hand out some of these to the friends? Everybody here, can you help me? Thank you. Everybody can take more than one. You could take a, actually, take a more than, take like, I don't know, a handful, five. Make sure there's enough for everybody, though. Hey, look at that Michael. Yeah, I said take a handful, but make sure everybody gets some, because we don't want to go crazy. Thank you, Michael. Okay. Oh, Jennifer needs some. Okay. Oh, Jennifer's your mom. That was silly of me, wasn't it? Okay, you're, yes. I'm, I'm such a silly person today. Oh, okay. So, everybody hold on to them tight. And I want you to lift up your feathers. And sh Yeah, oh, good. Joy, shake them. And then, are you ready? I want you to do like, do like confetti. Are you ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Is that fun? That fun? Joy. Let's do it one more time. Make sure everybody gets some. Yeah, because we're all in. Yeah, beautiful. 
Okay. So it's all about having fun and enjoying. Good job. Okay, I need every, you know what's going to make me joyful? If everybody puts them back in. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to add, Natalie, can you help me? Whoop, don't go away yet. Oh, thank you so much. We're putting them all back. That's what's going to make me so full of joy. Okay, whoops. Okay. Here, Natalie. Oh, thank you, Charlie. Okay. Okay, and then I need you all to sit back down. Oh, okay, don't worry about it. Everybody sit down and fold your hands. Fold your hands, Isabel. Thank you. Graham, can you fold your hands? We're going to say a prayer. Okay. Dear God, Thank you for your message of joy. Give us wings to share your message with the whole world. Amen. Okay, thank you. You may go share your joy with Mrs. Sutherland as you practice for your pageant. And everyone else, I invite to stand. I think, no, don't stand. I don't know. Yeah, stand. <laughs> We're not going to sing quite yet. <laughs> so here is the story of the birth of Jesus the Anointed. And it's quite a remarkable story. Mary was engaged to marry Joseph, son of David. They had married, and yet sometime well before their wedding date, Mary learned that she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, because he was a kind, understanding, honorable, wanted to spare Mary shame. He did not wish to cause her more embarrassment than necessary. Now, when Joseph had decided to act on his instincts, a messenger of the Lord came to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to wed Mary and bring her into your home. And family as your wife. She did not sneak off and sleep with someone else. Rather, she conceived the baby she now carries through the miraculous wonder working of the Holy Spirit. She will have a son, and you will name him Jesus, which means the Lord saves because this Jesus is the person who will save all his people. Joseph woke from his dream and did exactly what the messenger had told him to do. He married Mary and brought her into his home as his wife, though he did not consummate the marriage until after her son was born. When the baby is born, I will name him Jesus, Savior, Emmanuel, God with us. Years and years ago, Isaiah, the prophet of Israel, foretold the story of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus in this way. Now let us stand and sing. Amen. Number 211, verses 1 through 4.
Please be seated. Let us pray. Oh God, amid the chaos and the cacophony, we ask that you bring us a silent moment now. Oh God, amid the hope and peace and joy, may we truly keep our eyes focused on you and hear your message for us today. Amen. Amen. So we continue to think about the angels who are among us this week. Every angel seems to use that do not be afraid opening line. As I was reflecting on what that meant for Joseph, I thought perhaps he needed to hear do not be afraid, not just because of the angel's appearance, but because of the circumstances surrounding him. As a man... He had all the rights within him to dismiss Mary, to actually bring her up to the judge and jury where she could be stoned. But The angel was saying, do not be afraid of what might happen. Worrying about the future won't change the current circumstances. So perhaps the angel was encouraging him to look at this in a new and joyful way. If you've heard my last two sermons, you've heard how I take the opposite of the word of the day in perhaps a new way, and today is no exception. So what I've been contemplating as the opposite of joy as worry. I'm no stranger to that. In fact, you've probably heard me talk numerous times. I've talked about the thing on my refrigerator that says, pray more, worry less. Maybe you've heard me talk about my worry stone. I'm supposed to rub this when I'm worrying about something. I even have a box of worry angels. And Juliana gave me this one Christmas. Let me read what it says to you your worry box. This box is for your worries, the aches within your heart, a place to tuck away your fears where love and hope can start. So keep this box beside you and know how much they care, for when you need peace and joy, the angels will be there. So I keep that on my bedside. So if people are giving you uh, gifts like this, <laughs> perhaps it's something that you need to pay attention to. And so that's what I've done. I've done a lot of work in that department. And I didn't realize that it was robbing me of joy until I began to see that I was missing out on things because I was afraid of what might happen. And so instead of being joyful or present in the moment, I was worrying. Worry, worry is the illusion that we can somehow prevent tomorrow's heartache. But when we live in that worry, we aren't living in the present. And so we miss out on the joy that is occurring right now. And we miss opportunities to be fully present with others and to share their joy. In fact, when 
we go around with worry and concern, we tend to rob others of their joy as well. Now, most pregnancy uh, announcements do conjure up both joy and worry, and I know that was the case with me. And so perhaps that was how it was with Mary and Joseph as well. But Joseph chose to believe the angel message, message that things would be all right, and that it was okay to embrace the joy and stay present with Mary instead of giving in to the worry of what might happen. Joseph had a decision to make. He's called righteous, but is going to break the law, a law that would lead to, as I said, perhaps Mary being stoned. He was righteous because he was going to quietly divorce her. As we learned in the Advent book, we're studying the journey by Adam Hamilton. If Joseph quietly divorces her, then later when people discover that Mary is pregnant, they'll assume that he's the father, and the shame will be his, not hers. Her life would be spared. We can already tell that he loves her more than he has a need for retribution. What a foreshadowing of grace. Matthew is writing for a Jewish audience, and this conne connection of being righteous and just would be understandable to them. So many of them were used to following the laws and the rules. And so what Matthew and the angel who was speaking to Joseph was trying to help people see was that it was the heart of the law, the spirit of the law, instead of the letter of the law in which we need to follow. Jesus will end up spending a lot of time explaining this to his followers. For many of them continue to try to do the right thing, but yet they often misunderstood the reason for the law. And so we need to remember to be in that spirit of the love of the law which God has given to us. Love one another and love God. Sometimes angels appear to us when we're about to make an important decision. And angels guide us into the direction that God would urge us to go. Now, there's a difference between forcing and orchestrating and encouraging. Free will is still upon us. God does not want to orchestrate things like a puppet on a string, but rather wants us to go forth with joy, doing what God has called us to do. Mary could have said no, Joseph could have continued to divorce her, but they all chose to hear the voice of God that came to them in the form of an angel. And as a result, imaginable joy burst forth when that baby was born. I'm sure there was still some trepidation among them, but that didn't let them stop. Instead, they gave God their worries and lived into their calling. And so in these days of confusion, in these days when we are worried about our future, when we're worried about our health, when we're worried about our children and grandchildren and parents and grandparents, let us Remember that we don't trudge this road alone. Remember your 
angel wing. Take another feather if you need it. Let us try to be more like Joseph. He was tough when he could have been weak. He was tender when he could have been harsh. He was thoughtful when he could have been hasty. He was trusting when he could have doubted. He was temperament when he could have indulged himself. I must say it would be refreshing to see more of these qualities. So let us be the messengers of encouragement and steadfast support as Joseph was. For that is what the Spirit is birthing into the world during this Advent season. So this week, I encourage you to find moments of joy, pure, unadulterated joy like the children with their feathers, and then share it with someone else. Amen. Amen. So as we prepare to receive our morning offerings, I encourage you to think about the ways you can share that joy, whether it's signing up for a present, donating and ordering a poinsettia, getting one of the items from the mission tree. Let us share the blessings we have been given and share that joy with those in need. Amen. Rest ye merry, gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born upon this day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From God our Heavenly Father, Blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same. The hell in Bethlehem was born, the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy.
Let us pray. God of joy and possibility, we offer these gifts so that they may be transformed into your good news for the sake of the world. Amen. Let us share our joys and our concerns. Oh God, in this moment, we give you thanks for all the ways we have experienced God's joy among us. We thank you for the joy of music, the joy of your children. We thank you for 
the faithfulness and steadfastness of all those here who um, give of themselves so much. Oh God, we ask that you be with those who do not feel joyful, who continue to deal with many worries and concerns. Help them to see that moment, even if it's just a little speck of joy that our Savior can bring. And may we, O oh God, be your messengers in this time and this place that we may get the message out there of the good news that Christ has been born to us. We ask that you touch the hearts and minds of those who might be contemplating coming to worship, that they may come next week to see the joy of the children and then Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Oh God, we do give you great thanks for the little baby who you sent, who is the joy of the world. It is in his name and with his words that we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When this Christmas song comes across your path this week, as it most probably will, stop for a moment and remember the reason for the season. We can know joy right now, even in the midst of fear, for God desires so much to be with and for humanity. That is why God sent Jesus, Emmanuel, and this spirit continues with us always and forevermore. Let us sing joy to the world, number 246. joy. 
Let joy live in your heart and share the joy of Christ with all you meet. Share joy by seeing the good in each other. Share joy by remembering the good times and hoping for good times to come. Share joy by praying for our world. In this Advent season, we need to see, feel, and share joy. As you go out into the wonder of God's creation, share joy, peace, and hope with those you meet. Amen. 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 Thanks, guys. Bye.